Coming up on LETV News, parents are angry as the Wentzville School District changes district boundaries. Some students may be forced to switch schools. Plus, the General Motors strike continues into its eighth day. Tensions are currently still high between the two sides as workers demand fair working conditions. And a Jefferson County couple is reeling after finding out their home was a former meth lab and now their unborn baby could test positive for the drug. Those stories and more ahead on LUTV News. Welcome to this edition of LUTV News. I'm Shaylin Davis. And I'm Chelsea Behrens. Thanks for joining us. The Wentzville School District is attempting to redraw the district's boundaries, meaning some students may be forced to switch schools. Over 17,000 students are currently enrolled in the Wentzville School District, making it the ninth largest school district in Missouri. Superintendent Dr. Curtis Kane says he feels that the rapid growth of the Wentzville area has caused overcrowding in some schools. He is pushing for this change and encourages children and their parents to take tours of their new school assignment and meet the new community. Students and their parents have a chance to discuss their concerns at a meeting held at South Middle School from 4 to 6 p.m. today. The United Auto Workers members strike against General Motors is on day eight today. The strike is a result of GM wanting to lower labor costs out of their fear of automotive sales slowing down. The union workers participating in the strike are making assistance pay of $250 per week, which is significantly lower than the normal hourly salary. If the strike lasts past Thanksgiving and Christmas, the union will give workers an additional check. The workers are fighting for better wages, health care, and job security. There are nearly 50,000 workers participating in the national strike, and about 4,500 of those are from the Wentzville plant. Presidential candidate Joe Biden visited strikers in Kansas City yesterday to show his support for the union, saying that he's on their side. The negotiations between the union and GM are far from a meeting point. An employee at the Post Sports Bar and Grill in Maplewood reportedly shot his sister's boyfriend outside of the restaurant. Maplewood police are still investigating. Police Chief Stephen Cruz calls the shooting an act of domestic violence. A 31-year-old suspect is in custody. The 26-year-old victim is in critical condition and undergoing surgery. No one else was injured, and no charges have been filed yet. A man in downtown St. Louis was attacked this morning with a hammer. It happened on the 3400 block of Nebraska near Cherokee Street. Shortly after midnight, St. Louis police arrived to find a 19-year-old man who had been hit in the head with a hammer. The victim was rushed to a nearby hospital and is in critical condition. The police have no further information at this time, but they are investigating the incident as a first-degree assault. Straight ahead on LUTV News. In case you missed it, an art festival took place in downtown St. Charles last weekend. We have an up-close look at some of the art that was on display. All that and more on LUTV News. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. A Jefferson County pregnant woman is testing positive for meth. The problem is, Alicia Hessel and her husband Tyler say they have never been around meth. 
the couple's home is the problem. It was apparently a former meth lab. In Missouri, a seller has to tell the buyer if the home has had a drug lab in it. The Hesslers were never told, but they found their home listed on Jefferson County's 2013 list of meth lab seizures. Further testing shows that the home's ventilation system is heavily laced with meth and other drug residue. The Hesslers have since moved out of the home, but Alicia is on the state's radar for meth. Her blood tests are now clean, but the baby will also be tested when it's born. If the baby tests positive, the Children's Division of Department of Social Services may get involved. A man and woman were fatally shot in a car late Sunday night in the Wells Goodfellow neighborhood in North St. Louis. Police say the victims were found dead last night around 11.30 on Maffitt Avenue. Investigators are focused on a white sedan parked on the street. The names of the victims are not being released. The Mosaic Fine Art Festival had its 25th anniversary this last weekend. The St. Charles Festival educates children and adults in how art can enhance their lives. The festival showcased local and regional artists. Art is available for sale. There are live performances and a few in a children's village are available for those 14 and under. Dogs on a leash are also welcome to the event. Entry is free of charge and happens every September. Coming up, we'll take a look at the forecast and how the weather looks around the area with the beginning of fall, even though it doesn't feel like it yet. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. She'll get it. Get it. Get it. When you bring home a Goodwill find, you give your whole town a reason to celebrate because you're also funding local job training and placement programs in tech, healthcare, and more. Goodwill. Bring good home. Queen is just my everything. His smile did it. His smile, his eyes, his knowledge. My landlord, he decided that he wanted me to move based on the fact that I was transgender. Let's just respect people in everyday life for just being human. Good news for some of us. Today is the first day of fall. On the west, we have a stationary weather since there is a mix of low and high pressures. Moving forward with the midwest and south, there is a strong high pressure, which means it's going to be fairly nice. So expect to see some pretty skies up above. Sadly, on the northeast, it is expected to be rainy and gray due to the low pressure. Shaking the local weather, it is time to keep your life jacket handy because fall has finally arrived, although it doesn't quite feel like it yet. For example, it is sunny and nice in St. Charles and Maryland Heights. There is a high of 78, then it is 79 in St. Louis. And finally, in Ophalon and St. Peter is 78. Looking at the five-day forecast, we are having a crazy week with some ups and downs. Today is really nice with a high of 78 and low of 59. Then Tuesday is going to be partly cloudy with a high of 83 and a low of 66. However, on Wednesday is expected to be stormy and windy with a high of 81 and a low of 61. Then on Thursday, things go back to normal with a partly cloudy weather, a high of 77 and a low of 66. But on Friday, the stormy weather comes back with a high of 85 and a low of 67. This was your five-day forecast, and now let's check in with Chelsea and what to do now that it is fall. Chelsea? 
When you think of fall, one of the first things you think of is lighting up cozy candles. There is a local business on Main Street called the Candle Fusion Studio. I find that it is a great place to make your own custom candle. And with it being the first day of fall, it can be a fun fall activity for you and your family or even for a date. The studio got started was uh, my wife and I were actually looking at some uh, business opportunities or things to do. We actually sought out some experts in the industry uh, in how to create and perfect and make the perfect candle. So the challenge that we have these days is you're not just competing against those in your local market, you're competing against you know, global markets as well. I start out my day by greeting any guests that come in and want to create with us. We have a variety of products that they can make. Um, I walk them through the process to make sure that they know uh, what they can do here. Oh yes, I totally recommend it. It's a great experience. You know, they explain everything so nice and so easy. It's a great experience too. So you get a really good kick out of what you create. So yeah, I totally recommend it. Five stars out of five. If you're looking for something to do in the St. Charles area on Main Street, check out the Candle Fusion Studio. For the upcoming fall season, they have the perfect scent for you. Bring a friend, bring your family, anyone. I'm reporting from LUTV News, reporter Chelsea Behrens. Thank you, Chelsea. Up next on sports, the Cardinals make it to the playoffs, the Blues preseason continues, and Lindenwood football takes a step in the right direction. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But uh, here's the thing, can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Can one piece of paper really tell you my whole story? Like that I was studying going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or how any time there was an opportunity, I was the first one to step up. Because I wasn't gonna let my life, my circumstances dictate who I was gonna become. And all of that, that determination, the commitment, the drive, that's me. And that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume, discover new ways to develop great talent like me. It's a magical season in sports for St. Louis. The Cards managed to pull off something they haven't done in a long time, sweeping a four-game series at Wrigley Field. With the sweep, the Cardinals assured a spot in the playoffs for the first time since 2015. The win officially knocked the Cubs out of playoff contention. According to some experts, the Cards have about a 95% chance of winning their division, but for now, their playoff ticket is punched. The Cardinals look to make a deep run in the hopes of bringing home a 12th World Series championship. The last time that happened was 2011. The Lindenwood Lions get their first home win since 2017 and the second home game of the season. The Lions defeated William Jewell Cardinals by a 28-16 victory. With this win, Lindenwood's football head coach Jed Stugart learns his earns his 100th career victory. The Lions are on the road this weekend to take on Davenport University in Michigan. We made the plays in the fourth quarter we needed, and uh, too many little penalties there in the fourth again, but we'll, again, they figured out a way to win, and we'll take it. Let's play Gloria. The Stanley Cup champs will host the Dallas Stars tomorrow at the Enterprise Center for the second home game of the preseason. Last playoff season, St. Louis beat the Dallas in seven games to go on to the Stanley Cup Finals. This game will bring joy to the city as the hockey season approaches closer to opening day. You'll feel the electricity in the air when the puck drops at 7 p.m. The Lindenwood women's volleyball team achieved their sixth sweep of the season Friday. The Lions defeated Flager College 25 to 19. In addition, Saturday, the tables turned and the Bearcats defeated the Lions three to one. This is the 13th time that the Lions and Bearcats met. The Lions will play Southwest Baptist University Friday and Jury University Saturday. That's the tea with sports back to Chelsea and Shaylin. Thank you, Danielle.
Well, that's it for this edition of LUTV News. I'm Chelsea Behrens. And I'm Shayla Nevis. Thank you for joining us.